relationship this morning. Our topic today is the compulsion to shop. Fabulous topic today. Over 50 and who's counting? We're talking about cosmetic surgery and how much is too much. I hear it can be eating peanuts. We have a happily married couple after two years who are here to tell all. I don't believe it. Or it's a miracle. <laughs> it's a miracle. Is there sex after marriage? Next. don't know one woman who can't relate to our topic today. Good women, bad choices. Huh? Who among us never once in her entire lifetime made a bad choice in a man? Or two, or three, or ten. Good morning, I'm Kelly. And I'm Gail, and I've only made 1,500 bad choices. <laughs> hey, you girls get right to it. No initials, please. But I'm trying to figure that one out. Who is that one? Okay. No, no, no. Later, we'll okay. talk. But uh, you come into it blindly because you just meet this guy and, they, and he sweeps you off. Absolutely. Off the bottom line is, is that I was divorced for three years and a bank came after me and took the rest of my money. I mean, a lot of money because they said, you guaranteed this, and I mean, I'm just saying the facts, whatever they are, and I was responsible, they said, and then I lost everything. I'm usually involved with women who deserve everything bad that I give them. So, you tried I mean, to kill her they twice. Give, oh, I did try to kill my wife yeah. twice. Uh, well, twice. that's a little over the top, isn't Not it? Really, just because she because was late I've... once. We all seemingly reach outside of ourselves for something out here, whether it be a man or a woman, or ice cream, or dope, or drugs, or whatever it is, to fill that emptiness. Instead of doing it internally. Okay, yeah. now let's, let's get up. practical. Okay. We, we want to change. Mm -hmm. I do. Kelly can already say no. <laughs> um, we, we want to evolve. <laughs> Diane you knows just... me all so well, don't you, dear? She's laughing. Thank you very much. Listen, I'm laughing, too. Besides, she seems she's, to have it together. Well, I know Kelly very well, and boy, she's paid her dues, and she's a strong lady, and I love her for that. It doesn't mean that she's not soft and vulnerable on the inside. Sometimes when ladies take care of themselves on the outside, it, it, and when they take care of things, people say, oh, they're tough. And they're, You know, let them call us tough now. It doesn't matter. As long as we take care of ourselves and survive. My first job, I was a, a helicopter traffic reporter. I wore a silver lame stretch jumpsuit. Figure that one out. This is radio, by the way. And got into a helicopter with no doors so that we could lean over and look at the traffic below and flew through the smog and the fog and the rain and the wind and every morning. Yeah. It was great. I couldn't have done it. I could, no. wear, I could wear the suit, but I couldn't, I couldn't do the rest of it. I want to make a resolution to lose weight and look more like you and let my hair grow long. And look, right now I've already got the skirt like yours. See? Oh, yes, you're looking good. Okay, Yetta has legs. We like that. All right, yeah, everybody I'm makes I'm that. I'm with you. My resolution is to look more like Kelly next year, too. Really, it's really. That was the joke. Yeah, no, I want to look like you. It's mine as well. I want to look more like Kelly Thank next year. Thank you very much. Too. And today we are talking about following your dreams. And it is so important for women to have dreams and to follow them. Gail, you followed your dreams. Heaven knows. I mean, you wanted to be a comedy writer early. And now, look, you've written books and movies and plays and television. And now you're writing Golden Girls. And it wasn't easy for you. You made it look easy. But I was there. I know it wasn't. You, you weren't there for the very beginning. In high school, I wanted to be a slut. <laughs> Such a dream. Yes. So when I get below the waist in a love yes. scene, I figure that my readers know where I'm going. Uh -huh. They don't need a map. This oh. isn't the Kama Sutra. Oh. Really? Really? Now, our topic this morning is women's sexual fantasy. So tell me, Anne, how do you provide for women's sexual fantasy? It's quite easily. Novels? My audience wants a fantasy of bonding, uh -huh. not bondage. Yes. Bonding. Yes. Oh. Bonding, yeah. Sorry, oh. you know, no tie to the mm -hmm. bedpost. We all like to be attracted and kind of that chemistry yeah. and that kind of thing. Yeah, this but is provided you recognize this guy is the wrong guy, right? Well, no, you don't recognize it. You just recognize that your attractions lead you nowhere. I like him. I'm never going to see him again. Didn't you um, woo her back? Oh, heavily. Times. Heavily. <laughs> what, presents, jewelry? What did, what, what did you do? Everything? <laughs> Everything. Lies. Oh. <laughs> well, that's all right. We like to hear lies, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we never want you to admit do. their lies. We are certainly not above hearing lies. No, we're we, not. Therapists say that one of the biggest causes of divorce is men who just don't communicate. Oh, tell me about it. When my husband left me after 10 years of marriage, 
He left a goodbye note on a post-it. <laughs> I remember that. I recently read that uh, the largest circulation men's magazine in the country is Playboy, and the largest circulation women's magazine is Family Circle. <laughs> is there any hope? <laughs> <laughs> when worlds oh, collide. <laughs> Jim, what do you think? Uh... Uh, I'll look at uh, Family Circle. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> the okay. okay, then we'll read Playboy. See, we're making progress here. Is that progress? Sure, that's progress. We're bonding like heck. Most guys are just not very comfortable with, with their feelings. And I, I think that what happens is they they have experiences. They can have, I think, very important experiences that, that like are they're bonding. Uh, Prison. For example. This is, <laughs> what, that's it's a great yeah, place to a, bond. Oh, everybody, oh, everybody, open and close your hands. Richard's open and close. It. Open and close your hands. Okay. Oh, oh, palms up. Palms up. Palms up. Palms down. Palms down. Shake. 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 Oh, the blood okay. is going. All right. Now, feel your fingertips. Oh, oh wow. Ah, yes. Ah. Do you feel good? Circulation yes. thing. Oxygen sure. is happening. Do that's I? right. You're getting blood into your. And just think. You do that to all your muscles in your body, you're going to feel good and look good, and then you're going to have that positive attitude. You do. Really have Kelly that is up. very up. Yeah. Really. Yeah. She gives me a phone call at night, we're going to do it, it's going to be great, and then I think, oh my God, if I'm happy all the time, am I going to lose my creative edge? Because no, that why enhances is, why your creative edge. Why are comedy unhappy? <laughs> Tomorrow. They don't do their exercises every day. But that, for that just don't, that, that don't click for me. How, a comedy yeah. writer, you're writing a joke. Yeah. You're unhappy. Yeah. How you gonna write a joke? Some of the worst because dates I've ever had were with comedians. That's they're not they happy. They're no. miserable. And you know what? And they're comedians all over your date, too. And I'm yeah. scared to be happy. I'm scared I'm not gonna be funny anymore. Well, girlfriend, open the door to fear and you're looking sad That's and ain't right. nothing right. in there. Yeah. What about the complainer? The one that just doesn't like the gravy. You know, we like thin gravy, you make thick gravy. What is this? What do you yeah, mean? there's different styles there, too. I mean, some people are complaining just as a way to be friendly and get connected. It's a kind Go of ritual. Figure, right? It's a ritual I call Go figure. Yeah. Really, <laughs> rethink your communication style to get along with those relatives you just can't stand. We'll be right back. To be a part of the Kelly and Gale audience, call 818-846-5364 for free tickets. Okay, now as you know, the Kelly and Gail show is about women, it's for women, it's by women. It's such a guy thing not to, you know, we, we have big hair. And we've covered a lot of topics. Oh, from marriages that are good, not so good, from cheating to loving to making up to fighting. Now, however, that we have you tuning in, we're going to get to the really important stuff. Yes, hair. Yeah, doesn't it seem silly that this hair thing is so important? Silly? When I went to my high school reunion, all I cared about was having the longest hair. And did you? Yes! And now I feel I can die fulfilled. Because you had the longest hair? Oh, that too. <laughs> Stick around for the hair thing today on Kelly and Gale. So, Claire, you keep those letters going over there, okay? And thank it. you very much for this. And yes, our families, they do get letters, and we're going to be reading some next. We'll be right back. Merry Christmas, Kelly and Gail. Uh, Merry Christmas, Mom and Dad. How you doing? I'm doing just fine. Hope to see you soon. For security reasons, we were asked to cancel our audience today, and so that's all we're going to say about that for the time being. So it's going to be very quiet this morning. <laughs> I'm we, here, Kelly. You Don't are worry. here, and you're never quiet. Okay, so we're talking about coping with the reality of war. It is our subject. And my sister and her husband live in Abu Dhabi. It's in the Arab Emirates. It's about 600 miles away from Iraq. And uh, he works for an American company, Raytheon. She is a school teacher. She teaches in the American Community School there, and she'll talk about that. She teaches third grade. They've been in the Middle East for 20 years now. They were in Saudi Arabia for eight years. They were in Kuwait for eight years. Now Abu Dhabi for four years. And we have her on the phone live. And you said, while getting all this stuff out, you came across something else, some notes. Tell about that. Well, I, I also must add uh, that Bucky did throw in his Celtics watch. <laughs> okay, Celtics watch that I sent over there. Issue. Um, I found some notes that I had scratched. I had my fortune told uh, middle of August in Boston just before I was leaving. And this, this man in, in another city that knew me not at all said that there was going to be something major and very upsetting in my life this year. I, I'm going on a long journey, and sometime in the year I'm going to have very sweaty palms, but all will be well. 
can I put sweaty palms? But no, all will be well. be well, dear sister with no name. I thank you very much for being with us today. And I wish you a safe journey. And uh, you'll be back soon. I will see you soon. Okay. Boy, she's coping better with this than I am, isn't I she? Oh, yes. How to cope with the reality of war. We'll be right back. What a powerful woman. <laughs> Today, a very serious subject, how to reclaim your inner child. Well, if you see an old friend, if you watch two people when they meet, old friends, you see the two kids come out. Walt Disney understood this better than anybody. When Disney died, he said, while there's very little adult in a child, there's tons of child in every adult. I, I've never really dwelled on my, on my childhood. But preparing for this program and going over the exercises in your book yesterday, I've got to tell you, I cried like a baby. So what does this mean? This has to mean something if you ignored it and you've forgotten about it. Well, all of us do that because it's painful. Gail and I are in the audience terrified. To participate in an exercise. We're all invited to join in. And go to them and, and show them this little child that you once were. Let them see this wonderful little child and give them a big hug and know there's somebody there for you and know that you can take care of this child. So just sit down with the child and just say, welcome to the world. I'm glad you're here. I love you just the way you are. Now just be there for a second in that feeling with that little child in your heart. And then maybe just share with your neighbor how that was for you, how that felt for you. You may want to give, give a hug or ask for a hug. The child makes us very vulnerable. So give your neighbor a hug if they'd like to have a hug. Good, good. And just talk about what, what that felt like to, oh, to kind of touch that energy in you, that little child from the past. Just share that for a minute with each other. You have rung us out, John, I must say. John Bradshaw, he makes you think, he makes you reach into the depths of your soul, and he motivates you to do some very painful work. My you have father... to do the grief work. Grief is the healing feeling. No pain, no gain. You got to... Finish the past or you'll keep acting out the past. That's our belief. Yeah. You either hand it back or you hand it on. All right, John Bradshaw, we're going to come back and we're going to get some bottom line advice from you on how to reclaim your inner child. Very important.